Hello, it's Alina GG, and today I have a very special guest for you. Welcome aboard, Erina Hodson, Wellbeing Coach. Oh, hello, Alina. I'm so grateful to be here with you uh, to explore <laughs> <laughs> more yeah. of what's life for us. Mm. Yes, and we were just tuning in and we were like, okay, the intention, the intention is joyful service. So we're putting that out there and whatever transpires now has that energy. So even if this is all people watch, they can get a little sparkle of that sent their way. Yeah, beautiful. I love that uh, we're able to weave through that intention through the whole uh, time that we have together. Uh, I definitely believe that when we start placing that intention out that uh, it reaches the people that it is meant to, that really resonate with our hearts. So perfect. <laughs> yes, I love it. You're speaking my language. So you you hear now and, and from reading about you, there were a few challenges that led you here. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. yes. So I've I overcome a few different um, adversities uh, during my very short time here on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, throughout uh, all of those challenges, I've always been redirected uh, to, to myself, to within, uh, to my home, uh, to my soul. Uh, so that's really how I help in particular serve uh, professional women is to lead them back to their soul, uh, to their soul wisdom after they've experienced, you know, trauma, uh, life challenges, uh, so that they can really step back into their leadership and their power. Beautiful. So it comes from within and you help plug people into their inner wisdom and their inner power. That is yes. really special, yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, and and sometimes it's just a, a, a sense of you know there's different uh, access codes, <laughs> and it's tapping in like you know some people were just kind of a little bit like stagnating around different you know emotional uh, tensions or you know energetic blocks, whatever you like to call them, and it's just kind of finding the way to release them so that the life force. Uh, can flow in the natural way that your divine calling is asking for it to move. Let's go deeper into that because I interviewed um, Roy Bristow yesterday and he channeled some messages for me and it's, there's like, it feels like there's a whole, whole big change and an opportunity for me to, to serve in a different way now than what my mind was thinking. Although intuitively I, I knew it anyway. And so how do we listen deeper to those messages from spirit and how do we let go of trying to go, well, no, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing it this way. These are my goals. And then it's like, wow, there's something even bigger coming in. It seems like there's so much surrender and faith and trust that's required to go there. How do we tap into that and do that? Uh, I usually follow a pretty uh, simple formula. <laughs> and the majority of the time, uh, it's to do with the excessive amounts of stress that we have. Uh, so reducing the stress, stress is so huge. Uh, it, it really is a big blocker, I believe, to just receiving intuitive intelligence and being able to uh, follow through uh, with the guidance that you receive. So reducing stress, uh, releasing a lot of the attachment that we have on um, who we're meant to be and truly coming back into what actually is, as we were talking about before, what is actually bringing me joy? Where is it in my life that I'm experiencing those high vibrational, you know, tugs, shall we say? Yeah. You know, because there, there are different, you know, there are different kind of um recognition of that and a lot of that is through experiential <laughs> experiential exploration as we're moving around you know we often think like oh yeah I'm really good at writing so I'll go and write but where are you writing and who are you writing to like you actually need to experience uh, where it's starting to truly light you up and spark 
those kind of uh, inspirations, inspired, you know, ideas that come through and land like, oh my gosh, that's a whole nother pathway for me that I didn't recognize. But it's always been kind of niggling under the surface of that, right? Yeah. So most of the time, it's just removing a lot of the stress and a lot of the tension away from actually just naturally being who we are, who we are at our highest potential. Mm. starting to dream mm. so yeah reducing stress learning to listen to our inner voice uh, and allowing intuitive intelligence to land and to trust in that and then once that kind of uh, for me in particular I tend to like to just have an intermingling of that intuitive intelligence just dancing around you know when the frequency of of me in particular ignites ignites that kind of where do I go from here I'm very much a future forecast I'm, I'm a visionary so I like to when I have that consent and that permission we dance around together to really communicating with our higher selves to be like where am I meant to be in you know five years time or ten years time and then like from that starting to recognize is that is that calling uh where I choose to go will I evolve into being that because that that is the that is the clincher there's that choice point we have that free will to make that choice of following our divine calling and that's a lot to do with the throat chakra which has been shaking up <laughs> all over the world <laughs> yeah Definitely. And then it's taking those steps and alignment with that soul wisdom. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, accountability buddy, like, let's do this. <laughs> yes, definitely. That helps, doesn't it? Because yeah, I feel like there's some the 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 bits where people can get stuck, and I know myself included, there could be some story loops or some some, you know um in the nervous system some trauma stuck in the nervous system right like you say stress is <clears throat> similar thing and then it blocks the flow of energy but then if if we can find ways that work for us individually right because we're all bit we're we're all connected but we're all unique and individual so what works for one person in terms of like exercise or movement or yoga or diet will not be the exact same thing for another person so I feel like we need to actually really tune into what feels right for us and we're the expert on 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 our truth really we you know no matter how many other people we ask their opinion at the end of the day we've still got to go within and take that responsibility and then that's the sovereignty piece right we we go okay this is who I am this is what my choice is and and we can change our mind at any time so nothing is like set in stone we don't need to worry like am I making the right choice oh no this is my whole life purpose this is what I'm doing because it's like okay so you try something and it, it doesn't turn out how you think. Okay, try something else, right? There's just so much, yeah, that removes a layer of pressure, doesn't it? If you can just give yourself permission to, like you said, dance and play with the energy and the messages, then it's something that's more fluid, right? Mm. And, you know, and definitely when you're exploring and you're in the exploration stage, uh, but they'll get a stage when there needs to be clarity, there does need to be clarity. You do need to kind of dig down and be like, okay, this is what's this is this is the vision. And it changes, but in this moment, what's alive for me is that uh, you know, for me in particular, let's just use me as an example. Um, I see multiple houses uh that cater for people in all different ways with different cares and different modalities, uh, three of them. And so uh, who do I need to be to help that vision uh, become a reality, right? And then that's when we start going down, okay, because because when we uh, have that clarity and we have those details, it's sending out that vibration to say uh, what is a match for that. And it starts to align everything around uh, like a jigsaw, right? If we're manifesting, then we're aligning and moving the energy around so that it can be. 
So there's like there's the, there's the kind of exploring, and then there is actually we need to get some kind of clarity and a, and a vision, uh, nutting out all the details, and that's when it can get like oh wait on like if I'm committing to this, then you know I actually need to step in, and that's that that's that transition point when I'm talking about yes you need a, that's that choice point when you're like am I going to move? Am I going to evolve? Am I okay to be uh, this future self? Does that make sense? It does. It's, it's, yeah, and it's probably the highest vision, right? So it's like, well, why wouldn't we want to fulfill our potential and become our highest self? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, along the way, there's probably, um, yeah, I mean, there could be, there could be sort of like reasons why, you know, some people might not feel safe to be seen or safe to express or um, imposter syndrome or, you know, like I said, that nervous system, flight or fright, people, if they're stuck in that loop. So what Mm -hmm. other things do you see that hold people back and then how do they get over it? I mean, like how do they, you know, um, use that as a force to um, propel them forward rather than hold them back is what I want to say. Uh, I feel a lot has to do with knowledge and awareness, Uh, you know, how you were talking about, uh, you know, the trauma responses. Uh, Those are the things that I really delve into uh, in my individual sessions in particular is around uh, what is happening with the mind-body connection so that you, you have clarity on that. Once you have clarity on that, then you recognize that there's a pattern then and that's when you can actually uh, create the change uh, to make a new pattern, you know, and to let that kind of resolve itself through awareness and through uh, majority of the time. When I was talking to you before about reducing the stress, that means that we can receive. And when we receive, we will actually have intuitive nudges that will tell us what resources we need what strategies we need, what people we need to see, where we need to be to be able to move um, away from that distorted um, vibration. So we're constantly like moving away these distortions and these disturbances in alignment with our vision. Yeah, it's all energy, it's all frequency. And um, yeah, because then... I heard this thing yesterday, like the dreams that are real uh, chase you back. The dreams you chase that are meant for you, that are real, they're going to chase you back and then the universe is going to meet you halfway, right? Ah, uh, yeah, like that That beautiful, uh, that reminds me of the beautiful saying, what you are seeking is seeking you. Yeah. And yeah, definitely. And, you know, we can, I mean, that's really why I love to kind of delve into, um, you know, the individual responses that we have as life goes, because a lot of this is unconscious. You know, a lot of those, you know, erroneous beliefs uh, that we've we've built into our um, into our filing cabinets and our minds. Where did they come from? From the ages of like zero to eight. You know, we were just sponges taking it all in. So obviously that operating system's been there for a long time. It is familiar. It is very comfortable and it has served us. We're here, we're alive. But it's when we start to stretch (laughs) that other things start to flare up. You know, those kind of things about imposter syndrome or, you know, people seeing us in a different way. Because as you move along, uh, if you accept that that is, you know, the the highest potential for this timeline is that, you know, there is going to be inner changes and that's going to be reflected in the outer reality. You know, so of course, you know, the perhaps the people that you were associated with before needs to change, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that can be... Uh, the, the place that you used to work needs to change. It's not in alignment. You know, these are things that you need to be taking uh, a lot more courageous action to support uh, what you know to be true. Yeah. Mm. That's a great confirmation of how I've been living my life. And um, 
to the outside eye, you know, it can look like a bit disjointed. Um, but then if you're listening to those internal hunches, right, it le- it takes you to where you need to go anyway. So, um, mm. yeah. Yeah, and I think that's really interesting. Like I've I've always been an an, an intuitive uh, intuitive guide. I've been uh, connecting and communicating in with different energies since I was very young, and uh, it's it's so interesting to to know uh, what is um, what might be coming up next because it can change, obviously, with with our conscious awareness. Uh, but still to have the resistance mm-hmm. <laughs> and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's and that's beautiful to actually uh, to know that I don't actually have to do it all on my own. You know, yeah. that that's one of the biggest lessons that I always come back to is that, uh, yes, to heal oneself is to heal others but also to allow a healing to happen and connection with others will greatly uplift uh, humanity. Uh, you know, like we all often think we're on this journey and it's like this little box and that we're the only ones that have uh, a vibration and a, and a uh, manifestation that we're working on or that we're the only ones that are co-creating. But if we have a look at a bigger perspective, uh, there's all these different energies that are moving around and co-creating whether they are consciously doing that or not and we're all playing around so when we are looking at our like small little box in perspective uh, we think that this is the, this is the only reality but really everyone is moving around in their different frequencies and you definitely have those intersections with people for a reason yeah I imagine sometimes that we're on train tracks and like then we're kind of destined sometimes to travel alongside another train or have a come to a junction. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. And um and where do you where will you get off? <laughs> where will you get off and like play around for a bit and jump back on and <laughs> go on an adventure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and, and I think we get, uh, you know, when we think about our joyful contribution to the world, uh, if we always are trying to look for things to heal, we're, we're kind of, all, we're, we're blindsided from actually what's very easy and accessible and can actually bring a lot of bliss into our lives a lot of connection a lot of money like all of those things when we're just focused on you know this is this is what's wrong or this is the resistance or this is not happening you know that's great but that's why I'm always like hey but look at that over there because that's where we're heading (laughs) that's awesome that's such a good little reminder isn't it like we can allow ease and grace into our lives as we co-create with the divine Yes, yes, definitely. And I mean, that's not from somebody that's had like an easy life. You know, I've I've definitely been through a lot of different um, traumatic experiences in life. And, you know, they they haven't, uh, they haven't been easy or like they haven't, but I mean, life has been quite challenging and hard, you know, and it has made a difference to switch around um, that perspective of life of, uh, you know, the the challenges, the life challenges, and the and the the murky uh, kind of unravelings that happen in distorted relationships, and you know those yucky environments, toxic kind of environments, uh, they can hold a lot of wisdom as well. You know, we're often looking like, oh, it's black and white. But if we look at it like a package and we look at it like it's on a shelf and that we can see through it, there's parts of that that we can pick up that can help us in our growth. There's parts of it that gave us a lot of wisdom. There's parts of it that we can share with others as medicine to help them on their journey as well. So (laughs) it's kind of just like looking at things from a different 
different angles. <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. Like it's such, it's all about perspective, isn't it? Right. So it's, it's just the old, you know, glass half empty, glass half full. Like that's the, the most basic, you know, visual of this, of this principle. And it's like, okay, well, you could really apply that to everything in your life and everything that's made us who we are. Right. And, and, and what's, what's helped us become stronger and, and, appreciate joy and light and love and ease when it's here because we've we've experienced a contrast to compare it to and so it's almost like now life is sweeter I value it more I can you know that that it's yeah I really want to taste my food and and breathe in the air and swim in the sea and feel that energy of the ocean all around me Mm, yeah definitely uh yeah I approach I approach uh, the I approach living as a human uh, firstly by recognizing that I am spiritual, that my soul is whole and complete and perfect, and that all of these human experiences I have are just kind of I always need to come back. <laughs> I'm always coming back, complete, whole <laughs> as one. <laughs> and it's a bit of a it is always, for me, I always kind of approach it as a bit of a play and a bit of a game and a bit of a dance and a bit of a, oh, okay, this has come. And uh, from here, from this moment, from being present with it, then where do I need to, where do I need to move or where do I need to sink into a, a specific state of being? Like from the present moment is like, that's when all of the things are possible. <laughs> But also, that is your choice point. And it's coming back. That's when I'm always like coming back. Yes, reducing your stress. Yes, learning about grounding. Yes, learning about being in your own body so that you can receive. Wow. And then what are some of the techniques you do to help people ground? Uh, the things that I do to help people to ground, I like to use uh, the breath and the body. Uh, majority of the time, I really enjoy uh, moving the energy down, down, down through the root chakra, down, down, down into the center of the heart. I've been doing that a lot in my uh, energetics uh, training at the moment. It's been really beautiful to ground every day. Uh, and I, a few, um, everyone's like, oh, just put your hand, put your feet on the floor and allow the roots to flow down into Mother Earth. But what I really like to do is, I can't show you, but if you think about the heel of your foot and if you slowly, slowly, slowly rock it, rock it, rock it and feel the pressure of the floor underneath your feet until you get to your toes and then moving it all the way back again so that you can feel every inch of your the sole of your feet on the ground, there's really an absorption of your focus and concentration onto that area. And then you'll be able to notice these are this these are my feet and they are on the ground and I am stable. So that, that's one of the ones that I use quite a lot, particularly for those that have experienced uh, you know panic attacks if you're very panicky or if you're very flighty, that will really help to center you right into that uh, into your body, into that space and into the floor itself. So it's very physical and it, it and it actually occupies um a lot of that, you know, oh, what's gonna happen? Oh, what are it's it really just goes zoom. actually, this is all that we need to concentrate on right now. And I like doing that one uh particularly when I'm out in public because it's not something that you can see, uh, but it's something that you can sense and that you you know exactly where you are. Your plate, you have a place to stand. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that one. <laughs> and so the way you work, do you also have guides that that um communicate with you? <laughs> Can you want to share uh, about them? Yes, I have uh guides that come through. Different guides come through at different stages of my life. I've had my ancestors uh with me since birth. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I have my spirit family. Uh, they come through in the in dreams. Uh, they show me a lot around um, like soul contracts uh, and a remembering of uh, the connection with my with your like soul group. Uh, and I also have uh, a lot of animal guides that come through. My one of my spirit animals is, or well, my power animal is a Pegasus. Uh, so that kind of I play the crystal sound balls. So I'll often have um, Pegasus just flying around to support you know whatever the intention is of that uh, of that session. Uh, I also have celestial beings coming through. Uh, one in particular that came through in the beginning of the year around March was uh, in this beautiful visualization I had uh, with another powerful mentor and I came and met a traveler that had a, a portal on their staff, they're holding a staff and they had this portal and um, it was all in traveler's clothes. Uh, and he was like a galactic, you know, galactic being of light. And he was preparing me for my journey home. And I, I wasn't planning on going anywhere. I, I had no plans on, on leaving the country or even traveling like to a different destination. And I think a week later, I was invited to go back to New Zealand, back to my homeland uh, to visit my parents. Uh, that I hadn't been, I hadn't travelled there for about eight years or so, and uh, whole my whole family went. Everyone, every every single person went back to reunite um, together. And when I stood on the land, uh, I just had this immense sense of uh, deeper trust in in my belonging. And I feel like my traveler guide really supported um, me to make that transition to just to say yes, actually just to say yes, because I was invited. So I needed to be like, is this, is this right for me? And he was just like so powerful and saying like, you know, you, you've traveled like galaxies, you've traveled through time, you've traveled, you know, all these different places. Like this is only going like three hours. <laughs> You're good to go. You're good to go. So um, that kind of strength, because uh, I, I had a lot of traumatic experiences, particularly in New Zealand when I was growing up. Uh, so I hadn't had a lot of association, like a lot of loving association uh, with my homeland. So going back and literally feeling the the presence of my uh, my tribe uh, when I was in, you know, very spiritually significant places, uh, that, that just brought tears to my eyes of just beautiful remembrance and acknowledgement that, you know, I'm never alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, a, a lot of uh, when I'm in sessions with people, a lot of their uh, a lot of their guides will come in. Uh, we will invite the uh, their guides in different energies. I like to work uh, in particular over the last few years. I've been working with the divine feminine energies, different goddesses, and I don't see them as a, a, apart from us. I see them as there are aspects of them within us and what can, if we ignited that, if we explored that, if we investigated that, how can that help us to remember who we are? That is so powerful. I love that question. My gosh. Yeah, I was just tuning into that as you were speaking into that. How can how can people connect more with that divine feminine energy? Oh, less doing, more being. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yep. So yep, yep. I really encourage a um, more connection in with your heart so even just breathing in through the heart and out through the heart and allowing yourself to um, ask yourself questions without doing anything without wanting a specific answer you know who am I <laughs> who am I who am I who am I <laughs> how can I best serve today 
And again, if you want to get really specific, <laughs> what is the next action that is in alignment with my heart? <laughs> and listen, you know, like these are things that you can do in five minutes in the morning, you know, stop, get up, um, you know, go to the bathroom, eliminate everything, get all clear, and then come back, sit on your sit on your uh, bed or um, in the lotus position and just uh, start to breathe in and out through the heart space, through the heart chakra. Connecting in with the core soft essence of you. And close your eyes, it's a lot easier. Internalizing, shutting out the distractions of the world around you. And then asking yourself the question, how does my heart feel today? And allowing. Allowing yourself to observe. Allowing yourself to receive. And then starting to walk into your heart deeper and deeper and deeper. starting to explore the inner you, the inner self. And you can just pop in different questions as you walk deeper and deeper into your heart. Who am I? How can I best serve today? <laughs> what makes my soul happy? What brings me joy? <laughs> And I sometimes I get a bit playful and I'm like, who will I meet today that will support me? Mm. What loving action can I take to contribute to community? So you can play around with all these different, and a lot of the times, you know, we think, oh, there's got to be some kind of structure. We've got to ask these certain questions. A lot of the times when you start to get used to being in your heart space, the questions will arise or the answers will arise before you've even had time to formulate the question. <laughs> Thank you. That is beautiful. I'm going to play that back and listen to that and, and, and go there. That is so lovely how you plug people into their hearts. That's really valuable. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for you showing up so authentically, so in such joy. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so how can people come and work with you, Erina? Oh, come and find me. Yeah, how can they come <laughs> yes. and find you? Uh, come and find me at lanternholistics.com. Uh, there are different ways to play and dance with my soul. Uh, that is either in energy healing sessions uh, where we do a lot of emotional clearing. Those are beautiful to have a bit of a taste tester with me. Uh, and in my longer journeys, uh, these are really where the full force of my service really comes through, is in my trauma recovery, long-term healing pathways. Uh, I usually work with a professional woman or mums in business, uh, supporting them to reco recover their leadership power. So a lot of that has to do with uh, learning about trauma responses, releasing traumatic energy, uh, reduction of stress, and deep, deep uh, love for self, learning all the different practices, uh, not the ones that are going to take you 5 million years, but the actual tools that you can implement on the go, <laughs> uh, creating more boundaries so that you can step into your power, uh, and move in alignment with your highest calling, your highest potential, and being super clear on what that is. That's really it. That's my main genius is actually giving you a lot of clarity on your future. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much. Mm. Is there anything else you'd love to share before you float off? 
Uh, I just wanted to share that if you are listening and you're like, oh, I don't know if, I, if I'm intuitive or if I have any, you know, uh, innate wisdom or anything like that, everyone, everyone, I absolutely believe that everyone has intuitive intelligence uh, is able to access extra physical sensory information, uh, sensory data. And it's really about learning about how uh, you receive best and you can unlock uh, more of the, you know, the either the, the senses, the, the sights, the, the, um, um, what do you call it, the felt sense, <laughs> the knowing, uh, the, the different ways that it might show up through hearing, all of those things can be tapped into and you have the power to do that. Hmm. Beautiful. So I just wanted to clear that up in case everyone was like, oh, I'm not like, I'm not sure if I have that. Mm. And I'm like, yes, you do. Everyone does. Yeah. And it is just, some people really devote their whole lives to learning more about all the different parts of it and then, you know, spread that joy of how to guide people to that, which is what I love to do. Or uh, you're just picking up on these intuitive intelligences so that you can continue to live your life really well <laughs> and uh, move in that, you know, that version of success that you have. Uh, I'm very, very... Uh, very passionate about allowing people to grow <laughs> into their vision of success rather than like what I see. <laughs> That's why it's a play and an intermingle. <laughs> but yes, very, very happy and joyful uh, to be able to be of service. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Mm. We have a beautiful day. You too.